Welcome back to Flashpoint, everybody, on this Sunday morning. We have an excellent discussion going with a fantastic new panel here on Flashpoint, all 30 and under. These are the millennials. These are the leaders of tomorrow. And in fact, you guys are leading today. And we were talking about uh, Syrian refugees. Governor Pat McCrory's stance on the Syrian refugees right before we went to break. And Mushtaba, you had something that you wanted to add. Yeah, uh, Beth, I definitely wanted the, the viewers to know that it was the, the work that millennials did, myself, Lula, and others, um, that we were able to get statements uh, released from our mayor at the time, Dan Klonfelter, uh, Jennifer Robertson, support for the Syrian refugees, as well as State Senator Jeff Jackson. Uh, we had uh, support from Kelly Alexander. So we had plenty of uh, community leaders who came out in support and understood that this was an important issue to discuss. We were able to educate them on the issue, and they came around. They, they understood that this we don't definitely want to be on the wrong side of history. So that was an important uh, victory for and us. And it's because of the work that you were doing within the community. Exactly. And one thing that's been in the news just this week here in Charlotte, uh, an article came out in the Charlotte Observer earlier this week that almost half of renters here in Charlotte are called Spurton. Renters, of course, a lot of young people are renters. Um, um, home prices are up. Affordable housing is a, a tough thing for charlatans and especially those who are trying to become upwardly mobile. And there were studies done that Charlotte, and you mentioned this uh, earlier, Dimple, that Charlotte ranks in the very bottom when it comes to upward mobility. So I wanted to get on that issue. I saw also recently two studies came out that, that the, the poor, the underprivileged in our communities are not voting. They're not getting out to the polling places to help with the issues that might help them. So let's start with that. And Dimple, this is your area of expertise. You work with the Charlotte Housing Authority. Absolutely. And um, so Charlotte being one of the fastest growing cities, we have ever increasing rent demand. So there are more units being built. There are more than 10,000 units being constructed for 2016, but none of them are affordable. We have seen 25% increase, 25% increase in one year. Now one bedroom rents, average rent is for almost $1,000. For one bedroom? For one bedroom. This is ridiculous. And now, just to give you other side of it, Housing Authority is building almost 173 units for 2016 and even fewer in 2017. Wow. This is a sort of like a drop in the ocean. Considering we have almost 30,000 units, 30,000 applicants in the waiting list today. And this calls for more investment in affordable housing. So people who need the housing, it's just not there. It's not available because the ones that are being built are costing up to $1,000 just for that one bedroom. One bedroom. You have a family. Yeah, and that's 25% increase from last year. You know, Beth, earlier this year, HUD Secretary Julian Castro came down with Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Alma Adams, and they granted $2.2 million to Southside Homes. So those who are living in the Southside Homes, they're given an opportunity to help them find full-time jobs. Those are the initiatives that we need to see here in Charlotte. We need to be able to have money come into Charlotte and put it into communities where we're helping those who are in most need. And what about getting folks to actually be involved in the process? I mean, as a, a study that came out, an article that was in the Raleigh News and Observer, uh, saying that there's a myth that, that poor voters are voting against their own interests, but the myth really is that they're voting, that, that, that those people aren't actually getting out there to vote for, on behalf of themselves. What do we do? What's the solution? As young people, what do you see? Look, I, I think we got to get out there, keep talking, doing exactly what we're doing today, talking about the issues and educating people. Um, in Charlotte, studies show that for every one housing voucher available, there's 160 applicants. 160 applicants. Um, there obviously is a tremendous need. There's 1.7 million people in poverty in North Carolina. North Carolina alone. Um, again, as, a, as an attorney that represents children, I've seen countless times clients and their families who are homeless young children, over 24,000 people in North Carolina, enrolled students are homeless. That's a travesty. That is a travesty. And, and I see these kids, they're, they're, they're living out of hotel rooms, um, sleeping on carpets, doing what they can to get by. Um, homelessness is continuing to rise in Mecklenburg County. Uh, we're seeing homeless shelters are having to be much more equipped to handle these things. So we've got a bunch of issues. Uh, we've got to look at targeted vo vo um, voucher programs, um, looking and focusing on our young young people and young families first. Because again, like like I told you before, the children are our future. The children. So if we invest in these young people today, that's how they're going to get themselves into the upper and higher scale programs. Because if we start early with the younger kids today, 
that's how we're going to be able to move. And, and I don't see that happening right now with the need. The uh, Opportunity Task Force, apparently, Opportunity Task Force, excuse me, apparently they're going to be providing some actual remedies, hopefully in October 2016, talking about upward mobility. I do want to talk about the Durham Universal uh, Connections Program. We will get to that right after the break. Okay. Actually, it's a great place to stop. We have to take another quick commercial break, everybody. More Flashpoint on the way. I know you're going to want to stay with us, so keep it right here.